Hi, everybody. It's uh, Rob Shapiro from In the Mind Of. I'm the Clinical Director of Clinical Excellence for Professional Physical Therapy. I'm here with Frank Hefner. Hi, Frank. Frank is the director of our residency program. And Frank, we heard a lot about things called value-based care. Just want to um, kind of talk a little bit more about it and uh, welcome you to our, to our uh, broadcast here. Tell me more about what is value-based care. So value-based healthcare, you know, it's a, it's a term you'll, you'll see uh, being thrown around now. Uh, what, what it really means, value-based value healthcare. So what you're really looking at are patient outcomes and is one side of it. And the other side is, is the overall cost. You know, what's going on now, you know, throughout the country is, you know, health care costs a lot. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, expense, you know, tied to it. So value-based health care is really about getting the most for your money. So trying to get the, the best patient outcomes and at an overall lower cost. All right, so there, it's looking at, you know, what if you're looking at, let's say, uh, heart disease or diabetes or for us uh, looking at total knee replacements, you know, if you look throughout the country in, in different regions, uh, different, different services or, or treatments are being given to patients, um, you know, there's a lot of variation in, in what's out there. And then if you look at the overall patient outcomes, are there any differences? And a lot of times there's not. And sometimes certain treatments can be given and, and the cost uh, is very uh, extensive with those. And they're not getting any better patient outcomes at the end of the day. So value-based healthcare is looking at getting the best patient outcomes at an overall lower cost and kind of implementing that across the board. All right, what are the questions? Does that mean, does everybody have to be the same? You know, it, it, that's the big question. I've been doing this for 30 years per se, and, you know, do I have to be the same as the person coming out? How do we determine what I have to, what I should be doing? For the, for the providers, um, you know, as far as, you know, as physical therapy, um, no, it's not like you have to be the same. What, what it means is you're, we're looking at, you know, the bar, what we're measuring, you know, the bar is looking at, patient outcomes, right? Um, if, uh, if you're doing something and, and uh, you're treating patients a certain way and I'm treating patients a certain way, if our patient outcomes, you know, are, are the same and we're getting the same, you know, solid patient outcomes, then that's okay. Uh, you know, we're varying uh, in the way we possibly go about treatment, but if we're getting the same patient outcomes at the same overall cost, then that's okay. But what the, where the issue is, is if you're, let's say, doing different types of treatments and you're not getting the same type of outcomes that I am, then, you know, particularly, you know, uh, we both work for professional uh, physical therapy, you know, we should be trying to elevate all of our therapists to get, you know, the same good outcomes. So what are, what are, what am I doing that you're not doing or, or vice versa? So again, it comes down to, to measuring patient outcomes, you know, first we need to measure. You know, here, uh, professional, we utilize a uh, photo to measure our patient outcomes. So we first have to measure and see where the patient outcomes are. Um, we don't have to do the same type of treatments, uh, but we want to use ones that are known to be effective. Uh, and that's where kind of utilizing clinical practice guidelines and best practice patterns that we know have good outcomes and that have been studied uh, create the benchmark to follow. Where would I find, I was looking, I was a therapist out there and I said, I want to find clinical practice guidelines. Where do I find that? The practice guidelines can be found at the Academy of Orthopedic Physical Therapy's website. Uh, it's uh, orthopt.org. Uh, or we have them on our, for our company, for our clinicians, we have them on, we've put them all on the Clinical Excellence website. You have all the clinical practice guidelines right there. Right. So now who made, who came up with that? How do I, how did they determine what the right clinical practice guidelines should be? Uh, I mean, they've, they've put together several of them. You know, you could look at uh, two of the, you know, bigger ones, uh, you know, or bigger issues that, that we uh, treat uh, as far as low back pain and neck pain. There are guidelines out there, so they've done a literature review and looked at all the literature out there for those topics and looked at what types of treatments, what types of examination techniques, you know, what are the things that we need to implement in order to get, you know, the best patient outcomes. 
and they've put together these practice guidelines. And they're revised, you know, around every six or seven years as new data comes out and things improve. So again, these publications, these guidelines, you know, they're, they set a benchmark that this is what we, these are the guidelines that we follow for certain treatments. These are the outcomes that we know we can get. Doesn't mean it, things aren't gonna change. Again, it's always about trying to do better, you know, the kind of continual improvement. Um, you know, as a company, you know, we're measuring our outcomes now. We're trying to follow these practice guidelines and we know we should get a certain result. And then since we're measuring, we're measuring our patient outcomes with photo, we can then look at those outcomes. And if we have uh, clinicians getting superior outcomes and beating national averages, we can then look at, hey, what are they doing? Right, you know, future teachers. Yeah, we, we, we should, they should be teaching others how to do this. So, but again, you have to measure. So that's why you know, gathering this data, collecting these patient outcomes is hugely important. And you have a system uh, like photo, uh, you know, there are others out there. We, we use, we've chosen to use photo. They have a national database. So we're able to compare our data to the rest of the country to see how do we measure up and where are our outcomes and how effective are our treatments, how efficient are our treatments. Good. And then, so the interesting part, so we have a residency program and we're kind of, you know, you and I are instructing our therapists. How are we using clinical practice guidelines and we're teaching and has it been effective? Yeah, I mean, so far, I mean, the curriculum, you know, what they go by, it's all based off of, you know, current practice guidelines. And this is how they're taught to treat. And, you know, based, you know, their outcome scores have all been, you know, above, you know, on average have been above national average. Um, so it's an effective tool to really go by them. Again, it sets the benchmark. Doesn't mean you're treating all your patients the same. It doesn't mean that you're following this kind of cookie cutter uh, pathway, which is sometimes the argument against practice guidelines. It's not meant to be like that. Again, there's always going to be variation uh, with uh, individual patients. So you have this benchmark, you have these guidelines that, that are followed, and then you vary them based on individual patient needs. And, and that's okay. And that's still guidelines-based care. And that's what we're trying to promote with all our clinicians. So if you say a young therapist out there, what kind of advice would you give? It's, I'm starting out, there's so much stuff to look at. What do I do? Where do I start? Who do I go to? Um, I think the best place to start is you got to look at your patient outcomes. Um, you know, look at your photo scores. You know, see how are your outcomes for patients with low back pain, with neck pain, with, with shoulder. Um, and see what are your actual outcomes. You know, th that gives you a place to start. You know, again, if you're not measuring and you're not looking, you, you don't really have a frame of reference. So, you know, we have this system where you can then go in, in and look and see how are your patient outcomes. And so if, let's say, you go in and you say, wow, you know, all my, you know, my outcomes with low back pain is, is really poor. Well, then that's something that you should, you know, work to improve. And, you know, by, you know, you're looking over practice guidelines, see how you can implement different strategies with your treatments, that's going to, you know, improve your overall patient outcomes. And that's the goal. The goal is always uh, with, you know, this whole va value-based healthcare push is to improve overall patient outcomes. And then going forward, um, what do you see? That, what's the future of PT? Is it going to be more that kind of other? Or you think insurance companies will take this data and say, oh, you have to? I think the insurance, I mean, it's already happening. I mean, you, you have uh, certain private insurance companies starting to look at this outcomes data. Again, look at it from the payer's perspective. They want to pay, they want to get a good value for, for the money they're paying out. So they're going to want to see, you know, are these clinicians getting good patient outcomes? Are they get, be able to get patients better and get them better faster and save these payers money so they're they're looking at this data and then and medicare is involved now too with mips so the the patient outcomes data is becoming you know more and more important and it's now getting implemented and it's now affecting our reimbursement and i think going forward you're going to see that more and more um you know where you look at this aggregate data you know again professional physical therapy you know almost 200 clinics um, almost, what was it, 800 clinicians? You know, that's a lot of data. So overall, 
how are we doing? How are our patient outcomes? Payers are going to start looking at that and currently are looking at that. Frank, is a, a term I keep hearing, I, I don't quite get it. What's unwarranted clinical variation? What does that mean? So unwarranted uh, variation in clinical practice. So kind of some of the things we were mentioning, some of these variations between clinicians uh, in, in their treatment methodology. Um, you know, so what makes something unwarranted? You know, Rob, you and I could vary in the way we go about uh, treating, you know, a similar patient. But if as long as we're getting uh, the same patient outcomes, then that's okay. And that's not unwarranted. Uh, what makes things unwarranted is you, know, you and I treating pa uh, a similar type of patient uh, differently, and then you're getting different kinds of patient outcomes. You know, so you know we have you know these uh, practice guidelines that we f that we follow. Again, those are the benchmark and, and the baseline to on which to build upon. That, so we have these guidelines that we're supposed to be following uh, and to help guide our treatments and. Varying from them is is okay. You know, again, you're going to vary from them based on individual patient needs, perspectives, and, and things that the patient wants. But if you're varying from them and not getting uh, good patient outcomes, that's when it becomes unwarranted. Um, so that's that whole concept. So really, the the idea behind that is to we want to cut down on this unwarranted variation and retain variations that are due to, you know, uh, the individual patients, but unwarranted variation between what you're doing differently and what I'm doing differently, and that results in kind of different patient outcomes or different uh, total costs for treatment, that's the variation that's unwarranted, and that's the variation that we're trying to cut down on. What have we done? I know the residents have been, you know, pretty actively involved in trying to... Uh work on value-based care, et cetera, and we're doing some other things with the residents. What else have they been involved with this? Uh, to date, the residents have been involved in doing some literature reviews for, there's a practice guideline coming out on chronic pain. So they've been involved in looking at the, uh, doing the literature search. Uh, so these are, these are big projects uh, involving, you know, you know, 40, 50 people, uh, you know, volunteering to kind of look through the literature and and grade it and then take that evidence and that's what becomes a, a practice guideline so uh, our residents last year were involved in in going through uh, the literature to kind of find uh, acceptable studies to then be included uh, in the review um, we're also in in the process uh, of we've applied for uh, a grant with the AOPT, uh, the, the study we're looking to do would be implementing the low back pain uh, clinical practice guidelines in our clinics and then uh, utilizing photo as our outcomes measure to see, you know, does implementing these guidelines on a, on a big scale, you know, does it, have an does it have result in an overall improvement of patient outcomes? Because these are the types of things that, again, that, that are being looked at, you know, as far as value-based care. We want to be implementing effective treatments, getting, you know, good patient outcomes and at an overall, you know, lower cost, you know, so getting the best possible patient outcomes, getting people better and getting them better faster. Great stuff. Thanks, Frank. Thank you Mark very much. Thank you. Rob Shapiro from In the Mind of.